Welcome to another SatoCon Saturday. Today we're going to talk about kicks. Now, <clears throat> in the old days, kicking was taught always to be lower than the hand, because if you kick higher than your opponent's hand, he can then grab your kick. Not to mention, of course, that kicking compromises your balance because you have to be on one leg to do it. So kicking in the old school was never done really high. Now, with life and death sort of out of the equation, with sports and aesthetics that enter in, then of course kicking higher is, uh, is a good practice. It's good for flexibility, keeps the joints mobile and so on. Flexibility is actually more useful in, in terms of practical combatives for wrestlers, where if they get their leg picked up and, and someone tries to dump them, then of course the, the ability to have their leg up without being dumped over is advantageous. So there are advantages to learning to kick high but in terms of combative aspect, um, for real life self-defense um, fight training, kicking really high is not the best idea, unless of course you're going for sport or aesthetics or other things, okay? So the first basic kick we learn is the front kick. There are a variety of different front kicks using different foot formations. Learning how to articulate your foot into different positions is equivalent to learning how to manipulate your hand for a fist. So the first kick we're going to do, my getty, my meaning forward, getty. Technically, getty means diarrhea if you use it as a standalone, but it comes from keru, which means to kick. So my getty, kicking to the front. Okay, so we lift our knee. Lifting the knee and balancing is the first important skill in kicking. If I just learn to lift my knee forcefully, use your imagination. You can see the self-defense applications. Right? So if my knee comes up first, that allows me then with the push of my hip and with the ball of my foot, toes curled back, not fully pointed, not fully flexed or dorsiflexed, but plantar flexed with the toes up, knee, extend the ball of the foot, return the knee, and then back to whatever stance you're beginning from. That's the basic my yeti front kick. So to the front here, I'm lifting my knee, keeping my balance, hands are in a guard position or whatever position you're going to practice from, with my knee high, pushing forward, retracting, and stepping down. Those are the basic four steps of the kick. So we come to a flamingo or a crane stance, press forward, retract, and return to the floor as quickly as possible. What happens in most um, or the most common mistakes in kicking are that we simply swing the leg up so my knee rises and falls with the kick. That would be an arced trajectory. Any strike is most effective when it's perpendicular to the target it's going to strike. So if I'm kicking in an upward trajectory, my opponent would have to be bent forward in order for that kick to be perpendicular and most effective. But if I have an upright opponent and I want to kick him in front of me, then I need my knee up so I can press forward and make that as much a direct linear trajectory as possible. Okay? So we don't want to swing the foot up like a punt, but we want to push the foot forward with the power of the hips behind it. So my my getty, ball of the foot, basically is traveling in as straight a line as I can get it to go, okay? So basic my getty. To the front, we would practice, again, for balance. It's good to just hold your hands here, teach your body to balance. I could use my arms to balance, but if my arms are busy balancing or counterbalancing, then they're not available for blocking, grabbing, or striking. So if I can control my center of gravity and kick with my hands to my sides, then I can train my body to do the balance for me, leaving my hands free for their combative function. So from the hands at the hip position, one, two, three, return to stance. One, two, three, return to stance. From the side view, from basic yoy, and again, we can kick higher or lower, but in either case, we're going to lift the knee before extending the kick. 
we're going to retract the kick with the knee still elevated. Okay? Basic front kick. We can then apply that coming from our forward stances here, coming from square stance, coming from cat stance, kicking off the lead leg, and apply it in a variety of situations. Okay? Basic my getty. Other foot formations, variations of the front kick can be taught later once you've mastered the balance, foot position, retraction of the basic my getty. Thank you for joining. We'll see you next week on another Sedokan Saturday.